News. Very good evening to you with the Tuesday, February 13th edition of the CBC Evening News. I'm Ryan Broom in our top story. In what was his final speech in the House of Assembly, St. Peter MP and former Prime Minister Barbados Owen Arthur capped his 35 years in parliamentary life with an emotional farewell and appeal to his colleagues that we must not fail Barbados. It came as the estimates debate entered its second day today. That speech, which had the und undivided attention of every member of parliament present and those in the gallery, was also one in which the former prime minister made one last recommendation on the best course to turn around Barbados's economy. He says while the government has come up with a correct diagnosis of what ails the Barbados economy, the prescription is not the right one. Mr. Arthur also just suggested that the government engage the International Monetary Fund to help refinance Barbados's debt and that the Barbados Sustainable Recovery Plan be used as a homegrown basis upon which Barbados should engage the IMF. We'll have the contributions from Mr. Arthur and other members of Parliament in tonight's newscast. Well, the former Prime Minister has called for a country-first approach from all sides as Barbados prepares for a general election in the coming months. The next election be a great, great, great conversation about the future of the land and that the, <coughs> those who served with me in cabinet knew that I used to tell members of my cabinet, if we have a problem, let us face it and let us fix it. Mr. Arthur went further, stating that members of Parliament must not fail Barbados at this important time. When the size of the debt, what is before Barbados, sir, Madam Chairman, Deputy Speaker, is, is nothing that Barbados cannot cope with. Right. What is before us, Madam Deputy Speaker, is the greatest challenge that we have ever faced, but that we must not face fail Barbados. We have a good society where the greatest part of our social capital is that the people of this country want the country to succeed no matter who the government of Barbados is. And, and it is what sustained me in 14 years of leadership of this country that I was buoyed up on the wings not just of pride but industry in the knowledge that the people of this country want the country to succeed. And our Shane Jones has more on the estimates debate today. Shane? Well, thanks, Ryan. Well, let me try to paint a bigger picture of what took place in Parliament today during the estimate debates. I can tell you that one Minister of Government has offered guarded support for the installation of metal detectors in schools. Minister of Health John Boyce says the controversial idea may need to be reconsidered in light of recent incidents of violence in schools. I would even, I would even want to urge my colleague, the Minister of Education, that he may have to rethink what up until now has been one where they are not necessarily uh, uh, comfortable with the presence of metal detectors in the schools. It's a very serious thing. So I understand the, 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 the Ministry of Education thinking about that situation. Minister Boyce also gave his support to the police amendment bill. He says serious action is necessary to combat violence in the society. We obviously have a very serious problem with violence in our country and the attitudes of some of our adults who are guiding the minds of our children and therefore it will take serious action on our part to see to it that the criminal element does not exist with such uh, freedom in our society as to make this country, this wonderful country that we've gotten to know, uh, uh, impossible to live in. We also heard that investment in the tourism sector is the sustainable way to build Barbados foreign reserves. Tourism Minister Richard Seeley said his ministry has transformed the industry to one which now sees one million long-stay arrivals. 
I do not accept that we are somehow ignoring the fact that we have had these issues with our reserves. What we are doing is we are saying, look, social partners, work with us and let's put Barbados on a sustainable plan. Fiscal sustainability, economic growth sustainability, foreign exchange earning sustainability, and of course, ensuring that those that need the social safety net remains intact through it all. Yeah. That is responsible government, Absolutely. Madam Deputy Speaker. And, 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 and that is what these estimates are about. Well, Culture Minister Stephen Lashley is questioning the results of the average 3% economic growth touted by the previous administration. 3% growth, but you know what? At what cost? All of the major infrastructure challenges were neglected in Barbados. All of them. A decaying water plant, no water mains were changed, a decaying QEH plant, and they failed miserably, Mr. Speaker, to put in place any kind of sustainable plan for an expansion in the, in the, um, in the uh, uni University of West Indies. All of those were done. Opposition St. George North MP Glenn Clark has questioned a suggestion by government to change the period of wage agreement with the labor unions from the current two to three years to five years instead. Despite they have the increments, it is unfair. And you, you must understand that wage increases are always based on the cost of living. Wage, wage increase are always based on the cost of living and production. So therefore, if you are saying that civil servants have not produced anything, that's why you're not getting any increase. That's the argument. That civil servants have not produced anything and therefore they do, do not deserve any increase. Production level is... That's what you are saying. Because the mere fact, the mere fact if you say that salaries is linked to productivity, reverse it. If salary is linked to productivity and you are not giving civil servants any salary increases, you are saying that productivity is so low that they don't deserve anything. I am of the view that the civil servants have worked hard, nurses, policemen, and so on, work hard. And when, and when we talk about a good society, a good society is a society where you recognize people's worth. This is one of the big topics in the debate. Government is taking the issue of sewage on the south coast seriously. This from Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair as he told Parliament that Cabinet had just signed off on a $600,000 water master plan. He said that it is time now for more than just talk and after careful consultation with experts on the issue, it was identified that the cause of the problem was a progressively deteriorating network and an agreement has been made on what now needs to be done. The government is therefore working steadfastly to correct this problem associated with the South Coast Sewage Project. It is not an easy problem. You would have heard minister, the minister speak uh, extensively and he and his team at the weekend about the issues that are faced, the solutions which in themselves have complications and can produce complications and the ones that we are proposing to utilize um, to see if we can bring relief to the residents work short term and of course in the longer term understanding that eventually the plant is going to have to be uh, seriously addressed but so far as the networking is concerned that we are going to move as expeditiously as we can to resolve that problem city mp jeffrey bostick is contending that barbados is no longer punching above its weight charging that the economy is not viable and is socially imbalanced he is suggesting that government has dropped the ball in managing the economy, citing transportation, garbage collection, and sewage woes as burdens for Barbadians. Just yesterday, problems surfaced at the sewage plant in Bridgetown, forcing the plant to close as well as today. And Mr. Bostick is hoping it can be brought under control soon. I credit the authorities for at least coming out and speaking in a timely manner to people in the residents and the business places in terms of um, informing people as to exactly what is transpiring at the Bridgetown plant. And I'm not prepared at this stage, I'm not going to second guess the authorities in terms of what they have indicated about what is going on there, but I would urge the authorities to continue to keep residents 
and people who transit the area inform us to what is happening and they pray to God that it does not escalate into something that is beyond our control. Mr. Bostig also charged that Barbados' debt-to-GDP ratio has increased since 2008 from 64% of GDP to 135% of GDP, as well as the cost of living under the DLP administration. And he believes that the Barbados Sustainable Recovery Plan is too little, too late. When we look at the significant increases in the cost of living in this country, with a government that came in with cost of living, cost of living, cost of living being the number one priority. Yes. Significant increases in the cost of food. Significant increases in utilities and so on. When we look at the fact that our major economic engines have been misfiring and continue to misfire. And when we have created some new engines like the cultural industries, like heritage tourism, yes. yet we still do not see it fit to allocate the adequate resources to those engines that hopefully those engines will cause the others to ignite. MP for St. Thomas, Cynthia Ford, is calling on government to state its position on the new hospital, the Scotland District, Public Transport and Agriculture. On the latter, she queried what is being done to reduce the island's food import bill and to bring thousands of acres of uncultivated lands back into operation. St. Thomas is like a forest in most instances. And I know that the doctor, the professor at the university who's going to be working on that project is trying hard, and I understand that the Chinese would have funded it to be at Duke in St. Thomas, but it is now five years almost late. But it has, a, it has rolled out a vision for where we could go with a project that will suit these times we're living in. Well, Ryan, that was a look at some of the major stories coming out of the estimates debate. It's back to you. Thanks so much for that comprehensive report on the estimates debate, Shane. Will we take a pause here, but we have more news after the break. Welcome back. Well, the police seeking the public's assistance in identifying a man who is wanted in connection with a number of serious criminal matters. The man seen in this photo is about six feet tall, stoutly built, and is of a light complexion. Anyone who can provide any information to assist with the identification of the man captured in the image is asked to contact the Black Rock Police Station at telephone numbers 417-7500 or 417 7506. Police emergency number 211. Crime stoppers at 1 800 tips or 8477 or the nearest police station. All information received is strictly confidential. Well, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital has received almost $12.5 million in philanthropic donations over the past four years. And according to its CEO, Dr. Dexter James, those contributions have come from individuals, corporate groups, and some countries. One of them is the People's Republic of China. Its latest gift, worth over 200,000 US dollars, came this morning. This morning, we are here to receive donated supplies of a wide range of orthopedic implants valued at approximately 80,000 US dollars. This morning's ceremony will also see the replacement of our anesthetic machines previously donated. Meanwhile, the Chinese ambassador to Barbados, Yang Qiuxing, is confident that supplies will further boost the hospital's health care services. I believe that the above said material, uh, medical equipment and materials will further improve the medical conditions of QEH and benefit local patients. According to the solemn commitment made by His Excellency President Xi Jinping, President of the People's Republic of China, that the Chinese government will dispatch medical team uh, to Caribbean countries, including Barbados. In other news, close to 183rd form students at the Coleridge and Paris School now have a better idea about the careers they wish to pursue. 18 old scholars from different fields attended the annual career showcase 
to share their professional experiences and advice with them. Deputy Principal Captain Rodney Millington says the event sought to expose children to as many job titles as possible. We don't only limit it to um, the professional type careers like the legal or the medical type areas, but we also have other areas such as the technical vocational areas as well. So we would have things like um, persons such as chefs um, and other areas. We notice we've had aesthetics as well, um, persons in beauticians, um, nail technicians, etc. So we sort of span and cater for not only the academic, but the vocational areas where um, any area that the, the students are interested in, they would see some career choice in that area. Many of the students enjoyed the showcase and took time to share their thoughts and plans with us. It was very interesting. I got to learn about certain stuff so like medicines, how to intubate for my, because that's very important for my future career because I want to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. So I got to learn about how to operate and so on and the basic measurements and things I have to do. It was okay. It was good. Helped me to decide what I want to do in the future. I want to be a chef because my family could cut and thing, so I would like to be a chef when I grow up. It was interesting and it stood out and it will help me with my future careers. Physiotherapy, because it's interesting and it helps people. Big smiles could be seen on the faces of children in the Oxners community of St. James yesterday as Toddler Park received a welcome facelift. This free community park was upgraded with a relaunch of its playhouse with a new attached slide. The park is a project of Kiwanis Club Pride of Barbados and President Donna Archer was pleased to highlight the addition of the Lily the Safety Bug sign which gives children information on how to play safely in the park. The President said she was proud of her organization's contribution. This is one of our many projects that the Kiwanis Club Pride of Barbados has carried out and in doing these projects we are living the vision of Kiwanis International which states that Kiwanis is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to improving the world one child one community at a time. So hence we try our effort best to do projects that will you know encourage children to play, socialize and learn at the same time in a safe environment. The Lodge School Parent Teachers Association is on a mission to raise over $100,000 to fund two major projects. This year, the school is hoping to purchase a bus and build a bus shelter for students. President Collianne Ben explains these two items are critical as they would provide additional comfort for the student body. Currently, students wait for the buses in an open area where they are exposed to the elements. The students here are involved in a number of sporting activities. And one of the problems, because again of location and the regular bus route, you know, there's just one bus that pretty much would serve this area. We saw the need to provide a bus for the students who are involved in the various sporting disciplines. So that is one of the major projects that we are undertaking. Ms. Ben also dismissed some criticisms raised by some parents that the Transport Board school bus service is constantly late. At least once for this term we had an issue where the bus might have been extremely late in coming but that was all a part of the general problems that we are aware of that the transport board is having but it's not a regular occurrence here we are usually very well serviced and pretty much the envy of other schools because like i said we we are serviced well generally speaking we take another break here, but still to come, stories making headlines across the region. Welcome back. We'll top in news from the region as Guyana moves to develop its oil sector. ExxonMobil vowed to protect Guyana's environment and its people. 
Given the complexities and technicalities of the oil sector, environmentalists who attended the recently concluded business summit had raised concerns and even prior to the summit about how the oil company plans to manage its operations here without putting Guyanese at health and safety risks. Reservations have also been mounting on the question of how an oil spill will be handled. Addressing the forum last week, Vice President of ExxonMobil Development Company Ms. Lisa Waters said that the company is committed to develop the country's resources in a safe, responsible and a mutually beneficial way. ExxonMobil has an overriding commitment to safety and environmental excellence in everything we do. It is a core value of all of our employees. All our employees and all our contractors are committed to ensure our developments and our operations are managed so that nobody gets hurt. To ensure that today we protect the environment for tomorrow and the future. In the case of Guyana, the ExxonMobil top brass explained that while there may be a few mishaps here and there in terms of safety, it will not be widespread or major, since the company in recent years has prided itself in using technology to overcome those eventualities. We're finding innovative ways to operate more effectively and more efficiency, efficiently through such technologies as better seismic imaging, reservoir modeling, and more precise drilling, all of which we're applying in Guyana. These innovative technologies come together with our understanding of what is beneath Guyana's ocean. Waters said ExxonMobil will work closely with the government, its partners, and the people of Guyana to develop the country's world-class resources in a harmless manner that will have long-term and meaningful benefits. Investigations continue into St. Lucia's first murder for 2018 after a security guard was gunned down on the job over the weekend. The 53-year-old was a father of five. The relatives of 53-year-old Pascal Primo Hyacinth are trying to come to grips with the fact that he left home as usual for his security job on Saturday and never returned. His wife, Francisca Hyacinth, says she received a call informing her that her husband had been hurt on the job and she should proceed to the St. Jude Hospital. She would later learn that the father of five had been shot multiple times while on duty. The grieving widow says her family has been robbed of a loving father and dedicated provider. Then he was already dead, so I didn't get a chance. I didn't get a chance to say hello. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. I didn't get a chance to tell him how much I love him. He was such a, a wonderful father. He was a good provider. He always do what he had to do. Always been there for his children, his family. Always make sure we had food to eat. Always provide for us. And I don't, I don't know why somebody would want to kill him. Hyacinth was employed with a local security firm. The firm owner did not want to appear on camera, but told HDS News Force that this is a first for his company and he is truly saddened by this tragic incident. I was informed that an employee of mine, a security officer, was shot at his workplace last night. The incident alleged to have happened about minutes to 11. You know, it is quite sad that a man who has left his family and has come to work can be shot by some hooligans. Um, it is very unfortunate and I can only apologize on behalf, on behalf of the company for what has happened. Um, further, I would like to extend my deepest sympathy to the family. The Bahamas is using one of its young members of parliament, the youngest ever at age 22, to reach out to young people. Travis Robinson, the MP for Bain and Grantstown, is also the parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Tourism. If I look back today, those same brothers out there who was clowning on me, who was calling me this and calling me that, you know where they is now? A couple of them in jail. 
Three of them who was inside my same class, dead right now. And the rest of them calling my phone. Boy, Travis, boy, you remember me? Boy, 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 I need one job, boy. What you saying, boy? But I had to make the sacrifice back then. Why I tell y'all that story? I tell you that because as young people, trust me, we go through some hard times in life. We have some challenges in our life. But we got to be willing to make the sacrifice. To separate ourselves from the clique, from the crew. So that we could be what we want to be in our future. So that you could stand like me today and say, hey, my name is Travis Robinson. The youngest parliamentarian. The youngest member of parliament in the history of the Caribbean. With only several years of age separating himself and his audience, Robinson, from the reaction of students, was seemingly making sense. At least three homes were evacuated after several cracks appeared on the roads in Trinidad and Tobago. This as a Devil's Wood Yard mud volcano in New Grant erupted earlier today. Members of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service, and the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management, or ODPM, converge on the site of the volcano that began erupting around 4 this morning. In a statement, the OPDM said it is closely monitoring the situation. All sports is just ahead with Sean Green, but first, here's a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. Marijuana use has been linked to health problems, both physical and mental including chronic coughing, cancer, depression, anxiety, and personality disturbances. This tip is brought to you in association with the National Council on Substance Abuse, promoting drug awareness.